Modeling the car fleet. It's not easy, but it is possible. Here's a photograph of the fleet at Amarillo on my old HO scale layout. At far right is an Ambroid car that my father built over 60 years ago in Amarillo. It gives me a great deal of appreciation for what my dad and others like him went through back in the day trying to build models of these cars. I was so impressed with this car when I was a child that I tried to see what would happen when I ran it around his layout and had a can of black spray paint to see what would happen when the train went by. I did, and I was grounded from the layout room for quite a while after that. Can you imagine I'd do anything like that? This is the AHM car. If you can find them, that's what they look like. Well, you've seen what the real things look like. This roof walk has got to go, and the car is very rough. The trucks are obviously wrong, wrong, wrong. But if that's all you have, that's what you have. It's not a very good model. The underframe is not even close to what the car looks like. This is the Pecos River brass car that was imported back in the 1980s. While it has some improvements, I'm not real happy with the way that the tanks are modeled. The roof walk doesn't compute because it is basically a model of the War Baby car. I don't know if you'll be able to replace the roof walk. It is an improvement because it has a truck that resembles a 100-ton high-capacity truck but unfortunately it has roller bearings on it, so for me modeling 1955, the best compromise was trying to find some Ambroid kits. I built this one from the Ambroid kit. I was pretty impressed with it. I was not only impressed with the fact that it worked, that a 50-year-old car kit could be built, but the fact that working with wood again gave me a whole new appreciation how much fun it could be. I added a lot of modern detail parts to the car, the ladders, the placard, nut, bolt, and washer castings, and everything else. I think it turned out pretty decent for a kid of that age. Here's a little close-up of it, the truck. I found one made by model die casting before it was absorbed by Walters. Athern also made a 100-ton truck. The only problem is it has roller bearings on it, outside of my 1955 era. I carefully cut the roller bearings off, then cut the journal boxes off some AccuRail trucks and glued them back on with Delrin adhesive. The spring package is not totally correct, but it's passable. I didn't model the clasp brake, but the trucks look better than sticking anything else under that car. Way back in the 1940s, Sterling Models made a helium tank car kit. Look at this thing. I had to pay dearly for it on eBay. It has a 75 cent price tag on the box, and it's just a box of wood and some wire and decayed lead castings. But that was a kit, and no one had ever heard of it, or no one had ever seen from 1940. Anyway, here's the timeline for those interested in modeling a helium fleet. Here's that big dividing line right down here about when you can use these cars. Rail service pretty much ended on this about 1998, so I don't know how many people modeled that late, but I can tell you that they moved an awful lot of helium out of Amarillo, east and west on the Santa Fe. Before we close, we just have to address this question. Does a helium car really weigh less when it is full than empty? An empty prototype helium car weighs 243,400 pounds, give or take. The typical fill capacity of that car is 279,000 cubic feet. Helium gas is sold at standard temperature and pressure. If you've got one can of Wolf Brand chili, it's going to give you so much gas. If you have one can of fresh chopped jalapenos, it's going to give you so much gas. It's very important to understand the pressure relationship of the gas to the available space. If we were to take this helium tank car, take all of the air out of it, and fill it with one atmosphere of helium, the car would actually weigh 97 pounds less than it does. So in that case, yes, it does weigh less. 
But what happens if the car is now filled with helium at three to 4,000 pounds per square inch pressure? We know that helium weighs about 0.11 pounds per cubic feet at one atmosphere. If you put it in there at 3,000 pounds per square inch, you're going to get about 3,000 pounds of helium inside that car. And helium, like anything else, has weight. Because we've exceeded its lift capacity, the car now weighs 246,469 pounds. You're going to get a shipping bill from the Santa Fe Railroad for 3,000 pounds of helium, and that's the way it goes. The government decided in 1996 that it was time to get out of the helium business. Many of us like to say that the government can't do anything right. Everything the government gets into, it screws up, and in many cases, that's correct. But the helium program was something that did work. It worked exceptionally well. The helium that was produced on government land was owned by the government and generated a lot of money for the government. But things changed and they shut down the entire helium program. All the tank cars and plants were sold. Today, all helium production is in private hands. Inactive and for sale, here is a last look at XL in 2002 after a run for nearly 60 years. It's been 14 years since I researched and presented this clinic. A lot of new information has been discovered and I've incorporated it in these videos. However, I no longer model the Santa Fe, and I moved from HO to SN3 narrow gauge. No progress was ever made on developing an accurate model kit for any of the helium cars. All of the research materials, including prototype blueprints of all of the cars, are in my collection at the Springer Archives in Temple, Texas. I do have a PDF file of my clinic handout, which modelers will find invaluable. Send me an email from the link embedded, and I will forward you a copy. In 2012, five late production helium cars found their way to the SpaceX engine test facility in McGregor, Texas, nine miles from our ranch in Crawford. It is most fitting that these cars, who helped us land men on the moon, are now working for a new generation of space explorers and engineers. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe and check out my other videos on photography, machine shop work, SN3 model railroading, and Texas history.